reach out. I only know one truth. Atlanta, where the perimeter keeps the light side light and the dark side dark. It's the Nine Billion Names of Pod with Dan Bauman and Michael Reed. I'm Dan Bauman. I'm wondering how Ray is going to like wearing Luke as a backpack. So, let's talk about some stuff. Yes. <laughs> finally. About finally. stuff we shall talk. Stuff we shall talk. Um, finally, 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 finally. Finally, finally. Uh, so what you're saying is, <laughs> finally? <laughs> Been waiting. Um, they finally dropped the, uh, the Episode Eight trailer for Last Jedi. The first of, I'm sure there'll be a couple more. Yeah, there's probably going to be one more big one and then a whole bunch of TV spots, which I will do my very, very best to, to avoid. avoid. Yeah. Um, they, again, they were really good with the marketing for Force Awakens, which showed, like an extra second on either end of the same clip over and over again. Just enough to, I mean, just, you know, solo on the Wookiee that there. Oh, that was that, the, that sold an extra, I'd say probably 10 million tickets for the first 24 hours. Oh yeah. That was people were like, eh, I can wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. exactly. Um, so basically what happened was this weekend, uh, this past weekend, as of this recording, um, actually it's, wrapping up now was star wars celebration at disney in orlando orlando you don't deserve it orlando right anaheim come on yeah we could have driven there Wait well we could have well <laughs> if distance is the issue we could have much easier gone to orlando than we could have gone to anaheim. oh yeah 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 i was surprised they didn't do it in anaheim but uh well my guess is that they, they may bounce it back and forth I'm not sure. That's a good question. I mean, um, or maybe just the they facilities. probably do another one, but I think the they, the big main. I don't know why, but who who cares? The big main one. All was. I know is that Star Wars Land, as far as I know, uh, that's Anaheim. That's that's not happening in in Florida. Yeah, or, I think you're right. I think so, you're right. yeah, and, and that's me, 2019. I think I heard the last time. And apparently, um, when you enter the this section of the park or whatever, you choose. The light or the dark side. Oh no! And it changes how your visit goes and what happens. So. So I have to go many times. Many many times. Well, they did that with. Um, I never saw it, but they did that with the Star Tours ride, where they had different. Yeah, but that was like random. Yeah, you but just, I mean, you it never was, know. It was you know six different worlds right. you flew to. That well, you it, could... it, it keeps attendance up. Yeah, I mean, because I, I would go many times. I and, know, obviously, and gonna do the same thing. Gonna when when Star Wars when Star Wars Land or whatever they're they're not gonna call it Star Wars Land. I hope I don't not. know what they're gonna call. It. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, uh, a, a non wretched hive of. <laughs> <laughs> Unscum and Disney? I, yeah, good, yeah, I, I don't know good. what they're going to call it. Um, I've been planning a big visit to go back to uh, to California. Hmm. And I tell you, I'm, I've been planning it for uh, the summer of uh, 2018. But, but if Star Wars is going to pop the next year, I may delay it. Yeah. And add another week on to my visit there. Well, here's the uh, the sad, sad truth is that I have never been to a Disney park of any sort. That is that is sad. I would I would say <sighs> Anaheim is definitely the better of the two. And that's the real one, right? That's it's, the that's the now, one. What that, is it? Wh which one is Disney World and one is Disneyland? Disneyland Dis is, is Anaheim. Anaheim and that's Disney what World. Walt oversaw. It yeah. has a lot of OG stuff there. Um, and it's near and dear to my heart. I have friends that buy annual passes, and they get their value back in about two weeks. Right. Because they go. And go and go. And exactly. Go and go. It's like, oh, it's Saturday. What do you want to do? Disneyland? Yeah, okay. And they go to Disneyland. Yeah, if like you, you could. Would, like you would go to a restaurant or a theater or something like that. Yeah, or Six Flags here. Right, because, they're, because it's right there. Yeah. So even though they keep jacking up the, the rates, I think it's like a – Ten billion dollars now to get an annual pass with no blackout dates. 
And quite frankly, why would you want to go when, you know, every sweaty little tourist is there? You know, the key is to find the dates when there's not a lot of people there. Or, yeah. or there's always a lot of people there, less people less there. Less people, yeah. Instead of like 100,000 in the park, there's only, you know, 45,000 in the park. I mean, is there an off-season of any kind? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, there is. So... But anyway, but anyway, back to the trailer. Um, yeah. So well, okay. Well, back to celebration. Um, oh, okay. So on Friday, I I I had, well, Thursday. As a matter of fact, I had I I had heard rumor that they were dropping it on Thursday, and I was like, it's it's this weekend for sure. Is it going to be Thursday or is it going to be Friday? And then I looked at the uh, the schedule of the panels at Celebration and. It was forty years of Star Wars. I think was the was the the kickoff on has it been, Thursday. Oh yeah, it has been forty yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Good this God. is the fortieth. Um, and but how's the, that possible? I remember it as a child, and I'm only thirty two. Yeah, I'm twenty five. Oh. How's that even? Yeah. Um, they, they. Uh, no one buys that, by the way. They. Uh, so the 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 first panel was something like was was like forty years of Star Wars, and then the next panel was I think um, uh, animation with uh, Dave Filoni, the guy who does who did Clone Wars and did um, it does Rebels, and then there was something else. It was like Peter Mayhew. Or oh, by something. the way, saw my first episode of Clone Wars. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, it gets better. Uh, <laughs> well, now we started with. Uh, I think it was season three, episode sixteen, because apparently there's a there's a different order that you watch them in. Really? Yeah. Someone has come up with a this is the order that makes more sense. Hmm. Okay. So I placed myself a, a Paul McPherson who was yeah. who, who was on for uh, for the Rogue I think he for was the Rogue on, One for yeah the Rogue One podcast mm-hmm. episode. Um, um, I let him dictate the really? order and say all right i'm in your capable hands and make it make, make it so interest hold it that wrong okay. fandom what? Yeah. yeah okay yeah um interesting i didn't know that because i watched it like when it was on when it was coming out and then i kind of dropped off for a while and then it went away and then it came back and all blah 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 so so anyway the yeah, I think there was an animation panel, and then like a like I said, like either the droids or it was Peter Mayhew or something, and I was like, hmm. So I happened, hopefully no one from work is listening. I happened to be on what they call standby at work, so I was doing some computer work and kind of listening to the panel live streamed on uh, on Thursday. Totally acceptable. Yep. It's okay to multitask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the panel was pretty great because I, I happened to kick on kick it on, and it was uh, Wark Davis who uh, was Wicket and and a bunch of other characters. He was moderating, which I thought that's cool, that's cool. And when I kicked it on, it was uh, George Lucas and Dave Filoni, so they were talking about some of the animated. So stuff. Lucas hasn't completely divorced himself no. from the whole thing. No, absolutely he's not. He's just he's not doing. He's not. He, doing he doesn't. He's a figurehead. He's still you know the Lord Grand Poobah of the whole thing, but they don't come to him for actual like uh, decisions on anything. They they've got their own. You know, Disney has taken over, and he is still George Lucas. He's still the creator, but they don't. Right. He doesn't. I don't believe he has any. And he pull. He didn't like pull away or anything, and especially now the 40th anniversary. So, so it comes. So yeah, c- Kathleen Kennedy goes. Sorry. Yeah, it's me now, baby. <laughs> I don't care that you gave me this gig. Yeah, but. <laughs> you know, po- you know, play with your ten trillion dollars that you have. Right. And let me run the show. So he. Uh, so they they do the whole thing with him, and then. Um, he lee uh the, the they let dave filoni go and they're still talking to george and kathy kennedy comes out and they're kathleen kathleen they call her kathy though they do well do do you know her personally i do not then so kathleen i i accept your scorn sir. check your privilege <laughs> so kathleen kennedy yes um, daniel who if you don't know obviously is the who is now basically the head of uh, in charge of Lucasfilm. She's the Kevin Feige of Lucasfilm. She is, yeah. She's she was handed off. Pick, she was handpicked by um, by George her, himself, and it couldn't have been a better choice. I mean, she's in charge. She has a, a, a resume a mile long and has worked on every great movie you've ever but, seen. But Dan, a chick? How is <laughs> that going to work? Shut uh, par- up, nerds. Apparently, doing really doing pretty well. I'd yeah, say. yeah, yeah. Considering. Um, well, if there was a guy there, instead of just making billions and billions of dollars, they'd make billions and billions, billions and billions, billions of dollars. dollars. Yeah. Like, 
idiots. All right, just just, <laughs> just go play with your nerf herders. So they 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 come up and they start talking about uh, Carrie Fisher, and it's, <sighs> it's like oof, okay. And they just they too soon tell stories about how great she was, and then they introduced Billy Lord, her daughter, oh. who was wearing a very fetching uh, white princess ish number it was no. it was it was very and she have i seen her in something because she's she's done she's some actually acting. well she's in force awakens she's very very quick she's okay. one of the generals and i think she maybe has a line but she's yeah. i'm not sure i think she i think she does act i think she is an actor yeah no i i, I thought she anyway okay. but uh she proceeds to introduce the most heartbreaking montage clip Oh. Yeah, we'll put it up. Um, it's it's gorgeous. And like you put up the joke that you're gonna put up for uh, for the stand up comedy episode. Remember yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That like one. That one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But we'll actually do this. We'll actually do it. Okay. <laughs> right, very um, and it's 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 pretty brutal. It's amazing. But I mean, I was like, I can't cry at work. <laughs> nope. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, then they happen to bring out. Then, Situation normal. So Warwick says, okay, uh, you know, after that, after everything settles down, he says, um, all right, well, uh, let's bring out some, some old friends. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Billy D. Williams, Peter Mayhew, and Anthony Daniels. So they come out, and they're all there with George, and they're telling stories and going about Chewbacca and going, talking about uh, C-3PO and Gomba and they're like th and Mark goes this is great this this is really great let's bring out Mark Hamill <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Hamill walks out and they start telling a lot of the same old stories but it's great and he's going on about uh, his audition and they show his audition and it's terrible and and well it it's not terrible it's the dialogue that George had written was so like clunky and hard to I don't believe you <laughs> George George Lucas writes dialogue almost as good as Tarantino or Shakespeare <laughs> so they they go on for a little bit they go on for a little bit and and Warwick Davis does it again he says oh this is great isn't it it just po couldn't possibly get any better. Hold, hold it. So they're going to bring out somebody else? Yep. Uh, old school, new school? Old school. As old school as you get. They dug up... <laughs> they dug up Allie again. Well, please tell me they brought out... Well, no, as old school as you can get. That wouldn't be Frank Oz. No. Old school as you can get. Who else Who's is missing? Left? Uh, um, Kenny passed away. Yeah. And then, uh, not Dave Prowse. Nope. Oh, um, um, the voice. Nope. You're missing the the biggest one. You, do, you wouldn't expect that person to be there, but uh, not James Earl Jones. Nope. A bit. <laughs> oh God, Harrison Ford. Of Harrison course. Ford. Okay, yes, you're right. It was like yes, that was the big, yeah. the biggest. One. Well, you wouldn't have expected him to show up to something, but he came out, man. And they I were heard all that there. he is. He was contracted to be in this film. So I don't know if he was. Did I hear it wrong? Because I, I, mean, I have, we, I have never heard. I mean, that. I've the, heard you say that before. Right. I've never heard. That. I mean, the only way I will accept Harrison Ford in Episode Eight is if they do a flashback, which they don't really do in Star Wars. But they did, kind of. Um, the Force Vision, yeah, kind of. That's. Mm, I, I see. I yeah. see what you're saying, but that's a different. That's a different narrative tool. And of course, if they do that kind of forced flashback, like Ray gets her hand on Luke's. Well, hold it. She has it in her hand. Yeah, she handed it to him. Right. And he's standing there like, oh god, did I leave the oven on too? You know, <laughs> whatever. Um, okay. Well, I mean, if, if if Harrison Ford shows up in a forced flashback, okay, he may have had force ishness no. about him. No. If they can write and that. She could just be remembering, you know, that okay. the times. All right. or, or maybe it a, might, a, a it, voice. Maybe when, maybe when uh, Luke and Leia, if they meet in this film, yeah. maybe they maybe they remember. I don't know. Or they talk about All right. it. So. I, and, of course, I could be talking straight out of my ass. I, I and, have not heard that and, it was. You know, the only thing I'm just saying is that if – Han Solo shows up as Han Solo, like, hey, yep, I got a lightsaber through the gut, fell down, and yep, I'm okay now. 
I will call absolute bullshit. Yeah, there's no way. The planet blew up. There's no way. Oh, yeah, that's true. (laughs) He fell into the middle of the planet that blew up. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So he made sure that he was... But uh, so he comes out (laughs) and it was... I can say Harrison, it's not enough. Yeah. Uh, What happens to the... (laughs) Oh, we're blowing up the planet. There you go. There you go. No possibility that I'm going to come back. All right. I'll do the... uh, I'll do the... And it was great. Warwick had had the best line. He said, uh, you know, it was... was, Difficult uh, keeping the secret that you were going to be here, Harrison, considering the fact that you had to land your plane on the highway. <laughs> and they Ouch. were just giving him shit about it oh. was great. They were just kidding around like old pals and stuff. And, uh, he, and he took it. Okay. He took it great. He right. goofed around. It's I mean, it's See, up there. It's online. Sometimes he, he seems very jovial and, and fun. And other times he just seems like a grouchy old guy. Yeah. And you don't know which. Which Han Harrison you're going to get? There is a cringeworthy uh, Nerdist podcast where yeah. they interviewed him, and Hardwick was beyond nervous. I mean, not quite terrified, but he was very intimidated, and Harrison Ford smelled blood in the water. So he just did not let up and just gave him shit the entire <laughs> time. And it could have been a better interview if he, if, you know, Hardwick didn't just kowtow to him to the whole time. So when he, I think that's just, if he, if he knows he can use his Harrison Ford on you to wreck you, he ah, goes for it, you know? Okay. All right. All but right. in this situation, it was great. They were just goofing around and making fun of him, which is, you know, you wouldn't expect anybody to do. Uh, so the panel goes, the panel well, goes. They could razz on him all in once. What is he going to do? Not sign on for the next film? Yeah. And say, we killed you, motherfucker. So we're going <laughs> we're gonna to go at you like nobody's <laughs> business. And he, like I said, he had a good time with it. Uh, yeah. They wrap up, they wrap up, and lights go down, and lights come up off stage left, and there is the Orlando, I guess, Philharmonic? Yeah. With John Williams conducting... And they do. Wow. No, that's what it was. It was before With that. John Williams? Yes. John Williams that was conducting. That they got him out to do it. Yep. And I, I was mistaken. It wasn't after that. It was after the montage of Carrie because it lights come up and they played. He played Leia's theme mm. all the way through the Leia suite. Then he played. Then they played the, the, the theme, the main title. And then they went into the Imperial March. And it was, it was great. It was just great to see. So, But no trailer. No trailer at all. Didn't didn't not they didn't drop it then. That, this was Thursday, mind you. Yeah. No, they they they, they dropped Friday. It dropped Friday. Yeah. So I was like, after after that panel, I was like, okay, it ain't happening today. So when went about my business, and I was off Friday. So I'm driving around, and I'm like, panels at eleven, and I was mistaken for some reason. I thought it was Anaheim, so I was like, oh, we got till two o'clock. No, it was eleven o'clock, and. Um, I couldn't get home, and I finally, like, uh, had stopped to get gas or something, and I was looking at my phone, and, and it was just like, trailer, trailer. And I was like, shut the phone, throw it across the back of the car. I was like, I am not watching this on my little phone yeah. in a gas station. Well, um, Paul came over on uh, Sunday. Okay. No, Sunday. No, no, Friday. Okay. He came over on Friday to watch some of the bonus features on the uh, Rogue One Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Which suck. Yes. There ain't nothing on the, there. The, I, watched a little, I watched a little bit of the, uh, the stories. But <sighs> who, where's my deleted scene? Yeah, exactly. Where's the... Uh, I, I was a bit uh, disappointed, yeah. You know what? They're going to double dip that shit. Yeah. They, they, they learn from George. I mean, they'll... Oh, they'll fuckers. Yeah. There'll be, there'll be a big one for Christmas time. Get, oh, yeah. Get the extra deleted everything. Yep. And like, yeah. Well, I haven't bought my copy yet, so suck uh, it, Disney. Well, suck it, me, because I did. <laughs> yeah, well. But anyway. Um, but he had not, he didn't even know it was out. Oh, really? Yeah. So. It kind of snuck out. I was like, I, I was I hadn't at seen, my show. If I hadn't seen your post about the baby giraffe, I wouldn't have known that that was, you know, waiting on uh, waiting on the new Star Wars trailer. Oh, like yeah, the yeah, baby yeah. giraffe. <laughs> and I'm like. Apparently that's happening. Yeah, so. I knew it was coming. I knew I was like celebration. There's no way, and we're in April already. There's yeah. no way they're not. So I threw starting. it on a on a flash drive and and threw it up in, in the big theater, mm-hmm. and it was just like, there you go. Yeah, that's what so, I did. So let's get into the trailer. Okay. So we start with 
what looks like a star field and turns out to be rocks and then Ray like having some kind of fit. <laughs> like <gasps> Yeah, it, it kinda reminded me a bit of the Oh look, what is that? Tattooing? What is that? And all of a sudden up comes Finn going, huh, 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 huh. Right, right. You know. So they're keeping that going. Um and of course, you know, She's getting trained. She's getting trained. So obviously, and and Luke has more dialogue in the trailer in the than he did in the whole other movie, like, which was zero, zero, he yeah, had zero, I zero mean, dialogue, not zero. one word. Yeah. So, um, so the last Jedi is him, is going to be her. It's time for the Jedi to end, he says. Well, that's the end of the trailer. So we see uh, yeah. we see a lot of training. We see... Rocks. We see rocks. We see the island, which, from what I understand, is the the site of the first Jedi temple. Right. That's where, that's where Luke's been hanging out. Yeah, he's been... It, it's kind of weird in the Star Wars universe. Hey, let's hide your, you know, this, this child away from his father. I don't know. Where's the one place he'll never look? Oh, yeah. Let's hide him on his home freaking planet. Yeah, where he it's grew like, up. Where could Luke possibly be? I don't know. Hey, maybe let's look at the first side of the jet. No, no, no. He will never look there. Why yeah. would it be there? It's like, I don't know. I think that's a whole that's a whole other discussion. But I think that's more of a hide in plain sight kind of thing. Like it would be so dumb to hide him there that let's do that. You know what I mean? Someone's been drinking too much blue milk. <laughs> Uh, Someone's left the blue milk out too long. A little bit too long. I guess on Tatooine, it probably would, it, it would curdle in about three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, From what I understand, that's actually bantha milk. I don't know, because maybe... Okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised about that. No, no, there I, aren't many other animals that you see. Um, the God, you don't want it to be Jawa milk. <laughs> Let's 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 move away from that. So the so we see um, we see some some. It, it, my thought watching the trailer was yeah. we see uh, BB-8 and Poe running down the hallway, yeah. and I was like, that guy can't fucking hold on to an X-wing to save his life. No. <laughs> it's the second one he's lost. He's gonna he's gonna keep losing him. I I think it's gonna be a thing. Just you know. I hope they make a reference to it. I hope they're like, geez, another one. Another, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we see Finn in some sort of med pod something like a right stasis there? suit. Stasis, but he but his eyes are closed. His eyes are closed. because so, apparently he I mean he got a lightsaber to the spine. He did. So it's you don't just walk that off. You know, you just don't take a dip in the back to tank. You're like right, right as rain. Right, do But then again, you know how many people have lost hands in the Star Wars universe? Yeah. And all of a sudden, beep beep beep. You know, yeah. they're back in action. So. But I mean, does that? How much cyber fin do we get? You know, is that all built going to be built? Cyber fin. Cyber fin. Um, well, you know, it's possible. Maybe he's not really all that necessary for this episode, but he's going to be important in episode nine. So they just kind of keep his through line through this episode, but he doesn't really do much of anything. I wouldn't be surprised. My th it's my, possible. My theory was that it was he was kind of the bait and switch. Like he, you know, the fir I remember it was about this time when, uh, of the year when Force Awakens came out and they released a still shot of him holding the lit lightsaber yeah in the in the snow when he fought when he got his ass whooped by kylo and i was like why would you give that away why would you give that away why would you give that away because that's not the big reveal the big reveal are you, are you into fish because that was a red herring <laughs> exactly so maybe that was the thing it's like okay he's the he's the bait and switch of the whole thing we're gonna make you know ray is the hero but we're not gonna give that away until the i mean movie. Correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't see any force sensitivity at all out of Finn in Force Awakens. Not a bit. I mean, Not he, he was able to handle a lightsaber enough to hold off Kylo for a hot second. Yeah. But. Well, people were calling bullshit on that. They were saying, well, well, when he fights the, the one trooper on, on uh, Maz Kanata's world, um, you know, he's, he, he can fight with a lightsaber. It's like. He's a trained soldier. I'm sure he's trained in every kind of weapon yeah. you have. So a lightsaber, you know, no, he wasn't using the force, but you can, uh, you know, anybody yeah, can swing it, a sword. Really. Yeah, exactly. It's not like the lightsaber suddenly goes, I'm sorry, you're not forcey enough. Right. I will not work for you. Yeah, it turned it on and you swing it at people. You know, Han Solo turned it on. And we, you know, we, exactly. we understand that. Um, 
So no, I there no he ha, I I believe he he has zero force sensitivity. I don't think right. he has any any connection to that at all. I think he's just a guy, which I'm happy about. I'm happy that she turned out to be the the one, which you know raises all the questions: who is she and blah blah blah. And what's her, her connection? Someone left her on the planet. Yeah, and the thing just you know maybe Luke left it just like he was left with uh, with uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru, yeah. who apparently aged. 50 years and 20 actual years <laughs> or no 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly. So that's, I, I could not understand that from, from uh, was it revenge of the Sith? Yeah. Why are you handing baby Luke over to basically fucking teenagers? When we know the age of uncle Owen and Aunt Beru in a new hope, 17 years later, yeah. when Luke is 17, get an age appropriate set of actors Nope, we're getting maybe life is you know maybe life is really hard on Tatooine maybe. and the sun and you get wrinkled up and, and maybe aged. he was maybe Owen was more like twenty seven twenty eight so that makes him closer to fifty I don't know that's yeah. I mean that's nit, that's nitpicky but I guess you know that's I, I I get your you believe in the force and the magic swords but apparently the aging process on Tatooine has you stumped yes all right. All right. All right. <laughs> Now, the most interesting shot, well, that, that badass shot of whatever those ships were. Oh, with the red. The red, like, I don't know if that's coming out of them or it was coming off the... Because the, they looked like they were like hydrofoils, like they were touching the ground. And, and, and yeah, basically when you touch the ground, it's like the ground... So it must be like red like clay. Just like one kinda. inch, one millimeter underneath the surface is this red stuff that'll dust up. Yeah. Who knows what that is? Yeah. But visually, amazing. That is gorgeous. And I believe if that's, you look, that's something that is straight out of Kurosawa. Mm. That kind of bold color. Have you watched any Kurosawa? Films? Not enough, but some. Yeah. Um, Hidden Fortress, Seven Samurai. Yep. Raw, you got to watch these ones because um, Lucas just. Ripped oh off yeah, Kurosawa completely, big time. And of course, Kurosawa ripped off a bit of Shakespeare's, but it's, yeah, but yes, yes, yes. Um, and that's that's the kind of thing I appreciate. I mean, yes, you know, you get the the boom boom and the pew pew and the uh, you know, yeah. But you also get some something that's visually gorgeous. There's like, some gorgeous shots. Ryan like Johnson the, has done a really good yeah. job. Well, yeah. like in Force Awakens, we got the uh, we got the Tie Fighters against the Sun. We yep. got the X wings over the water. Yeah, stuff that is cinematically just gorgeous to look at. Plus, I think I mean that take that Michael Bay, you motherfuckers. Right, well, you're right though. I mean, I mean, George gets a pass because the technology didn't exist to do that and make it, you know, make a beautiful shot. You, they could barely get the freaking ships on screen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were using models and blue screen and and go motion cameras, and right. it wasn't. It just there was they couldn't make it pretty. It was like Starfield, maybe, and to be able to put them in, you know, to do the Apocalypse Now shot and to do, you yeah. know, flying over water and having the 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 rooster tail behind it. You you can't do that. And that shot in the trailer alone shows, you know, how far we've come. And I think if you if you uh, freeze frame and you look I think they're going up against walkers I think it's walkers that they're going against oh really so a little little uh, nod to to Empire basically well to Empire and Rogue One yeah and Return of the Jedi yeah I mean let's face it you know you only, you thought the walkers only really existed in Empire and a, and a couple in Jedi apparently that's like they've been around that's yeah. the go-to thing yeah it makes and, sense all and, terrain and, and what's the uh, what's the what's the proper name of the walkers uh, all-terrain armored transport, but they're yes, at at. I'm with you. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> someone at, at I Paul was the one who said it. Well, didn't uh, uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'll give benefit of the doubt all over the place if I don't know. I know this. It's at at. Yeah, you know. So <laughs> well, I mean, and of course, I've seen the, the little Kenner commercial. Back then, and they called yeah. it the ad ad. They yep. didn't call it the ATAT. Yep, yep, yep. So now, the most interesting shot I saw that I liked was you saw basically the temple burning, and you saw Luke on the ground next to R two, which is 
from the Force vision. Right. And the knights are coming out of the temple. And it looks like Captain Phasma is coming out of the temple. Oh, is it Phasma? If it's what it looked like to me. It looks like she's walking with the knights. Well, so. let's face it. If she's in this episode, she better be a hell of a lot more necessary than the last one. I think... Because... I think they're going to... Disney is very good at learning from their mistakes. Um, the, we we saw Beauty and the Beast, and they fixed a lot of the story problems with that. So they're, they're taking... They do take notice of things like that. They're paying attention to story? Right. And Continuity? To, and to detail, yeah, and to canon. Oh, oh so my gosh. So I'm hoping that they... Yeah, they justify and show why Captain Phasma has got the fancy armor and, is, you know, justifying having Gwendolyn Christie in this role. Right. And, and if, also why she caved so quickly to take down the defense shield. Yeah, that was... I, I mean, they could have easily have just said, you, random person we met in the hallway, gun, you know, you know yeah. blaster to your head, you take it down. So there's a reason why it was her. I'm hoping. Yeah. There's a reason why she caved so quickly. Yeah. So we'll see. Because right now she just looks pretty much like a shiny prima donna that's entirely ineffectual. Just what? Yeah, wasted. Completely and, and perhaps wasted. that's what they wanted to do. Like she's nothing much. And then an episode is like, holy crap. Yeah. Oh, now we yeah. know why. I hope we because get, she's the badassery is on twelve. We up the level and right. make it. Yeah, that's we'll we'll see. We will see. Um, that's the most interesting shot for me in the trailer um, until you get to the very end where my post after watching it was just well, that's not what I expected him to say because <laughs> you know Luke is talking and talking and it's time for the Jedi and I was thinking okay, rise, return. I was like return would be a little hokey. Rise might be cool to end. end. I was like what? <laughs> what? Now that could be in lieu of this new thing we're doing. Well, or there um, is Do you have a hypothesis? I have several actually. Uh -huh. Um the my first my initial thought is that his feeling is the Jedi and the Force have done nothing but fuck up my family. <laughs> yep, my kind of made my dad crazy. And, and you know what? That might have been him in a moment of self doubt and pity. And you know what happens when you start down that road? Yeah, are we gonna get a dark side Luke? That Ray will bring him back from the precipice of the dark side. That would be cool. That would be epic. Fucking yeah. Yeah. I would. Well, let's put it this way: I'd pay to see. Like, dude, you'd pay with to see anything. You're worth going Star to Wars. pay to see any at all yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Here's our two beeping out the phone book. Star Wars. Like, all right, sure. I'm sure there's something there. <laughs> Have you seen the memes uh, that's going around? It's like they're like three pictures. It's like. Um, let me think of one of the ones. Um, it was like, uh, it, the, it's a picture of Count Dooku and a picture of Anakin. And the first picture says, "Are you here to kill me?" And the next one says, "Yes." And then written and directed by George Lucas. Like they 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 cut them down to like one frame. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty funny. Um, my other theory about Luke is in the lore of Star Wars, there are. There is something called the Gray Jedi, which is kind of in the middle of the two. Oh. Not dark side, not light side. They, more like they can utilize both sides of the force. More like um, I'll have to I'll have to pull up the code. It's um, it's more like uh, here it is. There must be both dark and light. I will do what I must to keep the balance, as the balance is what holds all life. There is no good without evil, but evil must not be allowed to flourish. There is passion, yet peace, serenity, yet emotion, chaos, yet order. I am a wielder of the flame, a champion of balance. I am a guardian of life. I am a gray Jedi. That's really seems like what they were trying to go for with the whole bringing balance to the Force. Hmm. Well, that's the whole thing. It's just the one that they say we're bringing balance and balance yeah. and balance and ba you know. Because it, it evidently wasn't sure as hell wasn't Anakin. <laughs> he kind of fucked it, well, everything up. Well, well, let's well let's let's look at the situation before okay. before Anakin became a Sith Lord. Mm -hmm. It definitely was more in the favor of the light side. We we still had, uh, you know. So he did bring balance for a little bit, yeah. but then he wiped out. 
most of the good side. So yeah. then he shifted the balance the other the way. other way. Yeah. So I think we need a gray. Now is that going to be Luke? Because I was thinking about it. If you look at Luke's robe in Force Awakens, it's gray. It's not brown. Yeah. No. He's wearing very very muted gray robe. Yeah, but uh, you know. He's been eating what TV dinners and <laughs> you know has had no female companionship. His life there on he's standing on the island and just it's fading from the yeah. surf. <laughs> <laughs> I just stand there on the cliff for hours every day waiting and like yep there she is mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> um, Did you find a hand with it by any chance? Yeah, <laughs> there was a hand. <laughs> that's a, that's a great me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean. I, I'm I was knocked out obviously by it by the trailer and uh I can't wait. I was um it was okay. You really? Know, it didn't it didn't hit the same notes for me that the Force Awakens one did, but I have a feeling the reason for that is that these were this was the first taste this of is the, the true sequel to Jedi. Yeah. You know, and of course the first three, you know, the, the prequels were just, just no. Right. And also, I mean, the first teaser of force awakens was very minor, very minor, just like images of stuff and a little tiny bit of stuff that you could see, you know, um, looking for something else here. Because they announced something else too, um, uh, a couple other things at at, uh, at celebration. One being, which really bums me out, is that this coming up fourth season of Rebels is going to be the last one. Oh, really? Yeah, they're going to wrap it up, and it's like, oh no, oh no. But if they know they're going to do it good for them they're gonna wrap you know you know dave filoni was very very adamant to say we're not shutting down lucasfilm animation we're gonna keep doing stuff just this ep- these chapters are gonna right. be closed rebels is now over and now we're gonna do something else right and my i hope they go so far as to take it up to the battle of scarif because through mm-hmm. rogue one we know that some at least one of the characters from Rebels makes it that far. Right. We know that for sure. I and want to see an animated um, TV show that takes place between the first and second prequel that mm-hmm. just shows nothing but debates in the Galactic Senate. <laughs> just <laughs> debates and, and motions. Galactic and, C-SPAN. Oh, my gosh, yes. Motions to continue and... Uh, and uh, you know panels to investigate, and you know. <laughs> I'm looking for another. Uh, they're doing one of the other animated things they're doing is pretty cool. They're doing little micro. Um, I don't know what f- platform it's going to be on. Little uh, uh, animated c- uh, vignettes, I guess, w- about Leia, Ray. Ahsoka, um, uh, uh, Sabine from Rebels, and Daisy Ridley is doing the voice, and uh, and the char- the Rebels actors are doing the voice. I mean, they obviously got to get someone to do Carrie, but they're mm-hmm. gonna do little bits and pieces with those. And I think that's really cool. You know, oh, nice. focus on the on the women. You know, they had a heroines of Star Wars panel. Oh, nice. Um, now you know that they we we pretty much knew this, but they made it completely unambiguous now Carrie Fisher will not be in episode nine yes we're not gonna you know well the the rumor was you know they meet they immediately dispelled the whole we're gonna CG her in they said no we're not doing that um the the rumor that was going around a week or two ago was that the estate had give like Billy Lord and her brother had given them permission to use unused footage from Force Awakens and from episode yeah. episode eight, and if they need that to to tie up some loose ends, that's fine. But they're not going to Tarkin her. No, 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 no. They that, said and that, that's, and that's and that's what I'm getting at is that okay, good. What they've said was there's a ton of her in in episode eight, and 
they could you know they could justify a, a an end point an end game for it and good i hope that doesn't really screw up the plans they had because my thought was oh they'll need the mother to redeem the child but they might not be going that direction at all yeah. they might not be going for kylo ren to be redeemed he that may happen some other way or he might not or whatever but and that is an interesting thought i mean you know I almost don't want him to, but he's not as far gone as Anakin was at the end of right. Return of the Jedi. And he was struggling with the light side, as you know, and he was saying, I keep feeling the pull to the light. Right. So you're like, eh. See, my thought, my my headcanon, as they say, was that he was going to have to end up redeeming Ray. Ray would somehow get pulled to the dark side and he would have to turn around and bring her back. It's like that would be an interesting twist. What a twist. What a twist. So, Episode 9, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> no. I believe it's uh, Colin Trevorrow who did uh, Jurassic World is going to direct it. All right, sure. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. As long as it's not Brian Singer. No. Well, or, no, Zack Snyder. I'm sorry. Zack Snyder. Brian Singer's okay. Singer's okay. I, I don't think I would give Snyder. him a... You know, yeah. he's had his, he's had his, uh, his X-Men and such, and uh, but... No, I wouldn't get no, 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 Zack Snyder. <laughs> and I did uh, pick up Rogue One and watch it again this weekend. Yeah. And um, God, it's good. God, it's good. It's more so than just the, uh, and it looks great on on Blu-ray. It's, well, remember the the when they were doing the trailers, you mm-hmm. heard Saul Gurra, What will you become? And I'm like, great, I want to see that whole scene in context on the deleted scenes, and they're not there. Yeah, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no, yeah. I, I, and it, I thought, maybe it's on another, because it's the Blu-ray DVD pack. And I'm like, why would it, you, oh, you're bare bones in this one, and then there'll be a deluxe two Blu-ray, two disc Blu-ray set that'll come out for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, you know it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, you there has gonna happen. People are gonna cry for the those deleted scenes forever until they get them. Because I mean, you had brought up a point of uh, when they when they land on Scarif and she's in the, the Imperial outfit and they've got the two uh, we- the whatever the yeah. sticks or whatever. There is the, de- fo- the Deadpool weapons. Yep, there are, there is footage of her training with those. Like there's and it's like ah uh, yeah. There's more. There's more. And then, of course, then there's, remember, um, Rogue One had extensive reshoots. Right. And you know we're going to see some of the stuff that didn't make it. Well, that's the stuff we want to see. I think, you know, yeah. I think Disney's logic is, look, we did all these reshoots because that stuff didn't work. So here's the movie that worked. But, you know, the fans are just so hungry listen, for anything. Listen, if George Lucas stopped by and belched on camera for one second and then went away, we want that. <laughs> Yes. We want everything. Yes. We know what the film is. We can differentiate between a deleted or unused scene and the film. Mm-hmm. Give us everything. If you want to put out a three-disc Blu-ray set, we will buy it. Yes, it's in the trailer. Just, we can see it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't just say, look, there's this thing. It didn't make the cut of the film, but we're not going to show it to you. It's like, son of a bitch. But we're going to see it. They know. They know well enough. Trust me. And even if they don't do one at Christmas... Wait until uh, you know they do a um, like a Star Wars universe box set, you oh, know, geez. and it's yeah. like with seven discs of you know, and there's all the deleted stuff. There is, I mean, I my old roommate had the laser disc box set, and there's stuff on there that I still haven't seen on any of the other sets, and it's like, fuck, there's so much. Material. I, I would like to watch a two-hour film just on Ralph McGreary. Yes, I just mean, his paintings. And because one of the things um, we did watch the thing about um, uh, K two, K two or so, and how they evolved it from yep. basically just a black C three PO to something more. It's like, well, we went back to Ralph's original one. Oh yeah, and it was so gorgeous. I mean, all his stuff. I know. wanted to own all the originals and and buy another few houses to put them up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his stuff was just beyond. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't do some some paperback covers for 
for like um, you know Ellison and Asimov and stuff like that. I don't know if he worked exclusively in film. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. I, would, I don't know enough about. I need to know more about him. This Ralph McQuarrie. We'll, uh, we'll look it up. Well, one thing I do know is that one thing they're going to use from Ralph McGurry in uh, episode eight, they're finally going to debut. Medication time. Medication time. Ah, we ran out of time. I will tell you next week. The Nine Billion Names of Pod was conceived, written, and performed by Michael Reeve and Dan Bauman with Admiral Benny Hassan as the sound of splintering wood. Research, transportation, and exasperated looks by Courtney Loner. Technical assistance by Cubase, Pro Tools, Skynet, QLab, Deepbot, Big Brother, and Eddie or Shipboard Computer. Financial consideration provided by the Wayne Foundation, Stark Industries, the Piranha Brothers, and LexCorp. Legal counsel by the Office of Howard Howard and Fine. If you need me, I'll be in line. Current your music written by Tim Akers. This podcast is sponsored by Deep Shack Records and its production of Audio Primate. Throw us a couple stars on iTunes, why don't you? Listen, watch on YouTube, listen on SoundCloud, stream us on Stitcher, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us, comlink at billionpod.com. Until this happens again, I'm Dan Bound. I'm Michael Reed. Hello, Z. <laughs> Audio Primate